I heard an old school politician say that we needed immigration to fund the welfare state. Hello! <laughs> That's why we need immigration to fund the welfare state. Does anyone not think that's a bit peculiar? Was it designed? <laughs> Did they anticipate the need for healthy immigrants? Because the people in this country are becoming increasingly unfit for work. So if you as a government have this problem that your population is unfit for work or not properly educated, is the way to fix that to import people into your country that will work harder and cheaper in the, than aid in the economy to support these people you've had some responsibility for. Did anyone get that? Obviously that wouldn't be the case, would it? If you were sitting around as a government and you saw you had this problem, you wouldn't solve it by importing people into your country, you'd solve it by improving the education or improving living standards or improving working environments or whatever. So, to me, you know, it just fits in with my theory that there is dark, sinister something in play which has designs to kill us all. Well, slowly, gradually, so nobody knows and make us thick at the same time. It seems out there, but so does somebody saying that. And I, unfortunately, I can't remember who said it, but it was a someone who's been in government before. Like, a, it was it. Um, was it on Question Time? Was it? What's his name? Hesseltine, Michael Hesseltine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. Now, you could say, well, obviously at the moment in the position we're in, perhaps need immigrants to fund the welfare state as it's grown. And to be honest, you know, I've been a receiver of it as well, working tax credits during a recession, you know, I'd never claimed it before, but during a recession things got really quiet and I heard there was help with working tax credits for a low earner and it helped out. I've also had some housing benefit when things got really tight and um, I'm steadily trying to get off it. I want to get off it. I don't want to be on it. But I see the, you know, and for a few months I too was sort of thinking, great, <laughs> free money, you know, this is handy. And coming to terms with, you know, how weird it was that they were so, in a sense, so eager, or eager, just at the fact that it was there. Um, so I suppose it's a good thing for me because it gave, it gave me time to rethink what I'm doing. You know, I'm running a computer repair business which is gradually declining due to iPads and things. Computers becoming more and more reliable and the 
Mac software very good. Um, but knowing also there'll always be a need for someone like me with technical knowledge like that. Um, I want to stay in business. I want to, and also for the customers who, that I've built up and depend on me, I want to stay in business. So, so I've decided to take some part-time work, and I just landed this job as a support worker. So it's towards psychology, which is what I want to get into. So you know that's all good. Um, so I'm I'm grateful for what this has done for me. And if I talk, you know, if I'm only to think from my own point of view on how how the government and the state have treated me I've got to say I'm I'm very happy um, never been on the wrong side of the law fully anything major so yeah I you know I can't complain personally but when you hear the radio and you hear the politics and and you also you understand that Britain is responsible for a lot of places in the world uh, you know I don't think the Commonwealth when Britain owned all those you know all the things it did then but still now even though supposedly been given back power I th still think England imposes things on other countries. I've been to Africa where I've seen, you know, just bananas, just forever, bananas and maybe some tea, you know. And in a sense, you know, they depend on the people to carry these bananas to market. And they're totally green then, you know, for them to get shipped off everywhere. And it's like they're forced to grow bananas. And I'm sure if if it wasn't for some sort of old British power there that they could grow what they want. Um, so I think, but I don't know, but I think this country is still responsible for... And it gives me the impression that they just want to keep us sweet in this country. That if we started rioting, if we started protesting hundreds of thousands on the streets of London, they, they'd get worried. I, I feel that. I feel like the beast is in London there. And there's still that thing about Bilderberg. Um, the Bilderberg protest on the Saturday night, something weird was going on, different police turned up, people were allowed out, but once they were out they weren't allowed back in, and never heard anything about what the result of, you know, because a lot of the people, <clears throat> perhaps at the forefront of protesting and things, you know, perhaps, um, influential people may have gone then. I was tempted to go myself and it was weird like they were expecting this big party on the Saturday night and Alex Jones and his minion was asked if they were staying for that and they're like no we've got to get off we got early morning you know there was a video, one video of a guy leaving the place and he wanted to get back in and they wouldn't let him in. That was that one video. So, you know, they're keen, in a sense, for that not to happen in this country. And they're keeping everyone sweet with the welfare state. But we could be harbouring the beast. Somewhere in London, I guess. And, th you know, this is fanciful, but... <laughs> and maybe it's not an individual. Maybe it's a mindset. 
that sort of overcloaks people. Maybe it's something like that, you know. Something that is but isn't. <laughs> yeah, is. So yeah, that was that. And I also wanted to um, talk about ISIS. Today on the news they've been condemning them for smashing up some statues in, 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 in Iraq, you know, like 6th century stuff. Um, and it's weird that, you know, <clears throat> institutions and things come out condemning it and like making a big noise and they've called it a massive war crime. But what about killing a human being? You know, isn't that more of a war crime? I mean, that's what they do in war, isn't it? They kill other human beings. And it's like, well, that's okay, I suppose. But, oh, you're smashing a statue. And, oh, that's your culture and your heritage. You know, I don't think a statue is someone's culture. Culture is what people do, traditional things that they do. In England it would be playing tennis, playing football or rugby, you know, that's culture. And Sunday dinners and shit. That's the stuff that lives on. But anyway, so, yeah, first of all I say I find that a bit, you know, oh they now they're making big noises when a few statues are being made, but oh, it doesn't matter that how many hundreds, thousands of people have died in the last few years of wars. Yeah, in the last few years. In the modern day, how many have died? How many have... How many have been turfed out of their homes? How many lives has been affected, ruined, reduced? And of course they you know, they all want to get out of there. It's the innocent people who are just wanting to get on with their jobs. And, you know, our governments, as much as they make things cushy for us, they make us feel safe. They they affect these other places in the world. You, the BBC documentaries about Planet Oil and how you know how keen countries were to get hold of oil and would do anything you know war included to get oil. And it's uh, things are heating up because you know climate change and global warming and population increase and the state of the earth in sense of it's degrading you know the less places we can grow things the extreme weather must be making growing things difficult it's causing tension on nations and probably more so in the <clears throat> well de developing world and these equ equatorial places because the earth is heating up. Warmer world, wetter world, more extreme weather. We feel it in one way in England, they feel it another way in America, they feel it another way in all, all over the world. It's being felt in different ways. But it's it's causing problems so and it's exponentials. So I love that word exponentially. It's exponentially growing into a chaotic thing. Ha huh. So, if you don't know the meaning of the word, I don't mean to patronise anyone, but it's when something grows like like doubles and doubles and doubles, you know, and, it, and the, so the growth is like a curve, it's like suddenly goes shoo. 
because you've got all the factors adding to it. So there's this inevitable <laughs> reaction that soon nobody will be able to deny. There's been a lot of volcanoes in the last week or so. You know, and in a sense, you know, we're becoming numb to it. Oh, yeah, another volcano. Bloody hell, that actually looks massive. And then I checked RSOE and it was like, phew, last 14 days, almost every day, something about a volcano somewhere on the earth. So it's been, it is stepping up, you know. All these different elements are gradually increasing, but the overall effect is then more powerful and all these little events are increasing more and more what's causing it three possibilities one the most rational is that just human beings burning fuels and everything else is causing climate change and we need to do something about it and there's a whole lot of misinformation going on around to steer us away from hypothesis A. Hypothesis B, Nibiru is coming, which does then explain some of the unexplained things that you know, relics from the past, knowledge from the past, and Nibiru's coming. Hypothesis C is all about human souls and any hate that is directed out towards the universe kind of comes back and in an effect has an effect on the earth. And I'm leaning more towards that and there is no beast, there is no Nibiru. It's just human souls and the power that the human soul has. Yeah, got a little feeling then. It's a powerful object and if used for hate, could do some powerful things. Could be causing sinkholes, earthquakes, volcanoes, heating up, more extreme weather. doesn't really compute in a rational mind. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to keep guessing on what it might be. But going forward, um, you know, ISIS, are they God's army? Okay, I don't like to anything off the table you know is it possible that ISIS is God's army um, from the documentaries I've seen Vice News about them they seem very organized very good they're going around and and when they occupied a town the streets vibrant and shops are open and just not doesn't look bombed out there's some color there um, I th I'm not sure how strict they are on the women and so yeah so I see that good side of them and I'm a God fearing person they're God fearing people and in a sense I've always felt that you know if you don't believe in God then in a sense where's the motive to be good you might as well be bad mightn't you or, you know, how's your moral standing? Obviously, I can't speak for everyone. There's people who don't believe in God but have probably felt God and just put it down to something else. And and they're still great people. So, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, yeah, kill the unbelievers. I wouldn't necessarily say that. But I can almost see that point when we, when the world is in such a state that that the world can barely survive. That Mother Earth itself is, you know, going crazy. 
and they see the the Americans and you know and Europeans and stuff and as non-believers and they see the Jews as liars which is something I can kind of I wonder about myself too and I think you know maybe maybe this is God's army and there's should bound to be then propaganda against them that they're killing children and killing Christians you know whereas we've heard that they've given Christians a choice, either change your faith, join Islam, or pay a tax, or flee. I pay tax, so I guess if they came here and said, you know, either pay a tax or change to Islam, I'll, you know, I'll carry on paying tax then. I don't, I don't see why it should matter, I think, you know, we all understand really that's all one God, but anyway. So I was just saying, there's propaganda against them. Of course there will be. And even these um, videos where they're supposedly slicing someone's throat. Oh no, it's something fishy about them. Like, um, like all their other stuff. You see, any other stuff where they're being filmed, they've always got a flag. They're always flying the flag. It's a bit like um, Skull and Crossbones flag black with some white writing. I don't actually know what it says. Anyway, so there's in Boko Haram, you know, you see him, there'll be a guy with a flag. I don't recall there being a flag in these throat-slitting ones. It's just this bloke, you know, speaking English for a start. You know, could they be, could they be complete guff? You know, and they say, you know, when you hear, oh, Islamic State has released a video. You can watch a few different versions on YouTube. They'll all end just before you see any knife cutting or blood. It just as he's holding the knife there and then it cuts out. So who's to say that this, this, is, this is ISIS or if it's, it's true? And the orange jumpsuits. They have these very orange jumpsuits like Guant Guantanamo Bay. And Guantanamo Bay could have possibly been the secret tr training academy. I don't know. Yeah. Might have been really nice inside. You just see the pictures from the outside of them chained up and you hear stories of waterboarding and the rest of it. Perhaps the inside it was completely deluxe and they've been training ISIS in there. <coughs> you know it's possible. But um I'd say there's no fear, you know. If they came here now and infidel I'd be like pissed off, I'd be like, look, I believe in God. I am feeling God, man. <laughs> it's up with your head. Smoke fag, up with your head. See, I like. I saw a video of them um, burning cigarettes and alcohol. A lot of cigarettes. They just burn them up. You know, I wouldn't mind that if they did that here. Because at least then, you know, no one else would be smoking, so you could, you wouldn't like, give up for a couple of days and then see someone else smoking and just be like, <gasps> you know, just fucking get rid of them. See, I like to see that action, you know, and, but of course I wouldn't like it if there was some cell just started beheading people just because they weren't m Muslims. There, that I would not ab abide by, no. Um, and I would say to anyone taking up a sword, you, you take up the sword, you will die by the sword. I would believe that. And that's why I wouldn't take up the sword myself, but there's other ways, other ways to, um, to help a side, to, well, just to state that you're on a side. 
And I can't say that now because I don't have enough information. But the more I learn about the West, the more I think there's wickedness there. And the more I learn about ISIS so far, it seems like they're alright, but well, we'll see. Don't know. Don't know enough. So, I think that winds it up. I don't know if I really want to do a song. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Ciao.